good day, everybody. Um, my name is Fundi Lenyati. Uh, today, I'm interviewing a, a legend, an icon in the healthcare industry, uh, Professor Ephraim Tibedi Muhokong. Uh, he's a man of first, and today we are going to be hearing from him about the things that he has done uh, you know, in his life, especially contribution to the field of medicine, you know, and healthcare broadly in South Africa and beyond. Prof, welcome. Yes. Thank you. All right. Uh, Prof, um, we'll have an informal, you know, discussion. Uh, you know, it's important. You've just told me that uh, you've turned, or you're about to turn 87 years old uh, in the next 10 days. Now, it's important that uh, we capture you know, your story uh, as authentically as possible uh, about your life journey to date, uh, high points and not so high points, um, you know, your legacy, um, you know, regrets if there are any, uh, and uh, advice for the younger generation. Now, we will start where everything, you know, began in that village called Makotopong, yes, in, you know, just outside of Bulugwan in Limpopo. Can you just uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, when you were born, to what kind of family, and how did you grow up? Uh, you know, how many siblings you had? Uh, were you the firstborn, the lastborn, the middle child? You know, uh, that family that produced so many, you know, educated uh, leaders, uh, especially in the education sector. Well, simply, I was born on the 11th of February, 1934, um, at the village in Makutupong, which was a, a Lutheran missionary village. Yes. Um, I was born to... Two great people, I think. Yeah. My mother, Moloko Triforsa, um, was the only one in a family who studied, who went to school up to only standard six. The others learned more yeah. where she comes from. Yeah. She always boasted about that because that, she says, taught her to bring up children and to, to cook. Yes. And to another signal, almost an orphan, my father, Ephraim Tibedi, whom the Lutheran missionaries took and educated and found him to be bright enough to become a teacher. Mm. And uh, not too much later after that, he became a priest of the Lutheran church as well. Yes. They were so he became a teacher and a priest. And a priest, yes. Yeah. And he was, he was the first principal teacher of Kruzberg School where I studied yes. my primary. And... Uh, uh, my, and he was he then became their priest as well. Yeah. Of the whole Butogwa. Yeah. Uh, he looked after the whole Butogwa. Well, the two were blessed with seven children. Yes. Uh, I was the last of the Lord. Yes. The first was Sankuti Asos, who was known famous, famously known as SS. Yes. He was a, a teacher, degree teacher, a math teacher. He ended his career as. Um, as, as inspector of, of mathematics in what is called Iswatini today in Swaziland. Yes. That's when he retired uh, as. The second was also a teacher, uh, Marubin Anna. Mm. The third was uh, another famous one in the family, perhaps the greatest, I think, in the family, uh, Matsiri Pothinos, yeah. Karl Mokogun, who became principal of and principal of uh, the University of, of the North. TEF. Uh, until, yes, TEF, until he retired. He was involved in soccer and everything. He was, he was a man of many trades, but uh, a very great brother to have. Mm. And the fourth, uh, Mrs. Hatha Hilda Slailo, was also a teacher. Mm. And uh, the fourth, uh, Mamuti Marceline Mukhogung, mm. was also a teacher. All these two ladies later get themselves degreed of their own effort. Yeah. Uh, the third was Priska, 
uh, who was then Mkhaetwa. Yes. Uh, she was married to Mulutis. Yes. She went in exile with her husband and they lived in um, Zambia for part of their life. Yes. But she's back here in the country. She, yes. She's over 90 today. She's still alive. But she's still very fresh. She's still very fresh, yes, indeed. Yes. And I come at the end as the king of the Lord. Of this, <laughs> as I said, I was born in 1934. Mm. You were not a lat lamechi. Well, I came four years after Priska. Yeah. Um, my mother always said she felt bad. She thought she was going to end with a girl and she wanted a son. Yeah. And uh, she does jokingly used to say she went to pray church with her husband to have a son and I came. So yeah. I usually boasted to the rest that I was prayed for. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so um, obviously, you know, just in the early days, uh, growing up in that family with a father who was a teacher and a priest, Reverend, you know, uh, Ephraim, uh, you know, Tibedi uh, Mukhokong, you know, what kind of family was that? You know, the environment, you know, the values, you know, was he a disciplinarian, was, you know, well, I think both of them were disciplinarians. Uh, uh, they were disciplinarians and they wanted always to, they looked for success. Yes. They looked for quality. Yes. Uh, I was just saying yesterday to my children, though my mother went only to standard six, she monitored more closely what we were doing at school more than my father was doing. Yeah. She was always asking what you did, what homework has been done, even if it was something she would not really understand, but the fact that it was done. No, they were disciplinarians. They wanted us to work. One thing our father taught us is that never say I've done work. Mm. Say how well have I done the work. Yes. And that's that they, 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 put, they really infused into us and cultivated yes. into us. So what do you say? Some of those, you know, um, values and true north principles um, have actually guided you in most of your life to date. I think so, without any doubt. Yes, 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 yes. yes. In fact, I always think they made me into a non-tiring working horse. <laughs> and I think that came from those days. Yes, yeah. So um, this love for education, uh, which is clear amongst you guys as siblings, you know, was there any competition amongst yourselves as the siblings growing up? Well, you see, I was too far down, I must say. Um, but I think there's always been wanting to do a bit better than the others. Yes. If, if one could, a bit better than the others. But to me, for instance, my brothers were much older than I was. Uh, in fact... The person I really grew up very close to when we grew up together was Mamuti. Yes. Mamuti and I were the two left at home. The others were staying with the relatives because this was the culture of our people. Mm -hmm. For instance, if my, uh, my, my mother's sister needed a girl to help, then Priska or, or Hilda would go and live with her for, yeah. for a couple of years or so and so on. But uh, Muti and I were together until Muti passed under six, went to school, yeah. and until really she got married, we yeah. were together. Okay, all right. Now, um, if we just look quickly at your, you know, schooling years up until, you know, standard six then, you know, mm -hmm. any highlights from that uh, period, you know, uh, in terms of your schooling? I actually really started, it was one that I not mentioned, I started attending school at Masidibu, hey. which is where another place in Malaysia district where my father was sent by the church yeah. to come go and build the mission there. Yeah. So I started there many years ago. And when I came back to Cruzberg School, I was now in Standard 1. Yeah. Um, Any highlights uh, during well, that period? Well, not really much. I always was getting number one position. So yeah. I... I I only knew that if I didn't get number one, I, I used to cry. Yeah. But but this this is all that was in me. In my primary school is that I thought it was something wrong if I didn't come out number one. Yes. I, I would I would cry. Not that you were scared of your parents. No, no, I would really it was just cry. Just internal motivation. Yes. But uh, there's 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 a bit of history about it. The standard six. 
Um, I, I failed standard six the first time. The great professor uh, E. Timo Hokong yes, I failed, failed standard, standard six. I did. Um, it is a year where the village, all, all, all of us failed that year. I, I still... I still don't know. All I know is that I knew I, was, I wasn't doing well in the exams. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and we all failed. Yes. Um, and that's where you'll see that um, part of it, of my primary school, I did at Butogwa. Yes. Um, after I'd failed, my father called the two sons who were really teachers in uh, at, at, at high school. And uh, I do remember that meeting, the three of us with, with him, and he started by thanking God for what God had done for him yeah. and how well he had been done even in his farming enterprise because yeah. he, was, he was a commercial farmer as well. Okay. And, um, and he ended by saying, God can give you everything. This younger brother of yours is the best farmer of all of you but he's not gifted in the brain. <laughs> so we've got to train him as a farmer. Yes. yes. I still remember that meeting. Yes. And because from that meeting, I didn't sleep that day, and I was praying this God. And it's, I, the, the thing about that event is that that day I found God. Mm. All the time I used to just go to church, and but that day I talked to God as if he was next to me. Yeah. And I asked him why he was unfair to me. Yeah. He makes every one of the six pass and me to fail. Yeah. That was the main thing as a little fella. I remember yeah. saying that yeah. to him. And perhaps that was what changed my course altogether. Mm. That so your trajectory time. from that point, you know, ch uh, changed? Changed completely. Yes. Yes. So you repeated then the uh, grade, I mean, standard yes, six then. I repeat, that's when... As you see in the summary, I topped the whole transfer at the time when I was in 1948. Yeah. That's right. That All was right. a repeating. Yes. All right. So, um, and, and so from there, had you made up your mind now that, all right, um, grade six, I mean, standard six, uh, obviously there's now the JC, you know, you have to get to well, high school. I had to prove to my father that I could do more than just being a farmer. Yeah. Uh, and... I then competed with the other six without yeah. even telling them that I should better them. Yeah. Uh, all, all the other six. I loved them very much, but I, I said I'm going to do better than all of them. Yeah. That, I, that I inculcated into my brain. Yes. yes. And so um, where did you go then to do your high school? I went to Johannesburg Bantu High School, which was in Western Native Township, which was very close. We lived in Sofar Town. Yeah. Um, with my relatives who had a, a, a stand there. So I lived in Safar Town and we attended school at Johannesburg Bantu High School. Uh, important thing is that I was two classes behind the Archbishop Tutu. Okay, yeah, same he, school. He though. comes from the same school, yes. Yeah. Uh, in, in, my last, in his last year with him, I used to be in the same debating school yeah. team with, with, with Archbishop. Did Peter. you beat him in the debate? <laughs> no, well, uh, I just remember where he was the, the top man in the, the team representing our school against yeah. others. Yeah. Uh, you couldn't beat Archbishop with that type of <laughs> He was very good at it. Yes. yes. All mm. right. But now the adjustment, though, from um, high school, I'm sorry, from uh, junior to high school, uh, and moving away from Pulugwane uh, to being a Joe Berger now, uh, staying in Sophia Town. I mean, we hear great things about <laughs> Sophia Town, music legends, uh, actors, and, uh, you know, it seems like it was a place that was full of life, you know, so yes. the adjustment, wasn't it uh, a bit distracting, you know? Well, it, it isn't. Um, it it increased my, the, tens, the, tens, the tenacity of my competition because I had to beat the Joe Beggars yeah. coming from a rural area. And that, that made me very difficult to beat in class. Yeah. Uh, but there are many things I loved being in so far town. Yes. I, I still think it was the greatest cosmopolitan city I'd ever grown in. Yeah. Uh, it, there was a lot to learn in so far town. Yes. Uh, and, and as a township, it was above all townships. It was. It had everything that modern townships lack even today. Yeah. Our streets had nice tunnels underneath. We could walk from one corner to another under the streets mm. in a tunnel 
walk standing up, not crawling. Mm -hmm. That's how big those tunnels that were under Safar Town. That's all I do know, because I did that a few times. Yeah. Um, it, it, was, it was something. I mean, it gave me something to compete against yeah. and to learn from, and that was nice. Yeah. So you did your, what was it called, Form 1? To Form 5. To Form 5 yes. there. Yes. You know, and... Um, you passed all your classes. All of them. Um, there was no problem. Did you top the classes still? Yes, almost from day one to day zero when I ended. Mm. And your was, uh, any favorite subjects there? Well, I, I, maths was my best. Mm. And then next would be <coughs> chemistry, yeah. which was then in, in combined. Yes, it was uh, chemistry became sub, sub, uh, sub, uh, removed from physical science in when we did metric, but up to JC, they were the same subject. Yeah. Um, geography, I was very good at. And um, so it is the science ones. And of course, the vernacular, which was, was my mother tongue, yeah. I was good at it. Speed. Yes, I was weak in Africans. Um, <laughs> well, we came from where we didn't do it too well, but my brother wanted me to do it. And... Um, we had a very good African uh, teacher, Mongwe, mm. and he taught me, made me do private talpond tests, which I passed, yeah. and that's how I managed to do Af Africans and pass it in metric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when it comes to the math, science, and uh, you know other type of um, you know subjects, why you know the interest was there? Maybe somebody who was. Um, your role model, you know, somebody that you looked up to or one of the teachers who was very good at instilling the confidence and the interest in the subjects? Well, uh, to start with, I think uh, I, we came from, a, it must have been genetic because all my siblings were good in arithmetic. Yeah. And I was good in arithmetic as well. It yeah. all started, they were all good in arithmetic. So I became very good in mathematics as well. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember yeah. the name of my maths teacher. Is a great man. Yeah. Uh, maths. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, he made us believe nobody from any other school could beat us. Mm -hmm. So I never believed a person from another school could beat me in mathematics. Yeah. No. And, and that tells mm -hmm. me then that in your own school you were topping when it came to maths, all the way. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a, I had a little accident in the final. I must say. <laughs> Uh, uh, there was the thing called parabola, which yes. you had to do. Yes, yes. And uh, the teacher told us to do it at number five. Mm. So I did the, this paper one. I did the first four quickly. Yeah. And I started this parabola. It, somewhere it made it a, a knock. I just couldn't work. I never failed to do it. But that, And I spent time trying to find out where it is, why that particular point didn't fall into space. Yeah. And I wasted a bit of time. And when I realized time was almost gone, I had time to do two other short problems and, and yeah. it closed. But paper two, I did everything because I still think I got a very good mark. Yeah. It wasn't a distinction, but yeah. it was very good. So I must have got almost everything or, uh, in the second paper. Yes. But I still till today haven't worked out what had gone wrong that day. Yeah. That so day. your overall pass in those days you used to talk about you know, first class, distinction, this <laughs> and that. So, you know, what it was, was your... It was a top second. A top second. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but good enough for you to then proceed mm -hmm. to tertiary. Yes, tertiary. Not only that to be taken by any medical school where I applied. Yeah. It was that good, yeah. Were there any teachers that were teaching you or somebody who was like a, a role model to you about these subjects that made you to have so much interest in the subjects? Well, as I said originally, I think it was basically genetic. Yes. Uh, that we were from primary school very good at, math at uh, arithmetic, all of us. Yes, as a family. Uh, yes, as a family. So basically, I think it started there. You know, when you went from arithmetic to mathematics, it simply just blossomed. Yes. But I think generally, I mean, JC, there were different teachers, metric, they were different. They, they were, they were hard-working teachers, yes, you know. Yes, they, yes. Uh, <clears throat> committed teachers. Committed teachers, and they made us 
believe we can do it and yes. we can do it. Yes, Sorry, yes. Yeah. And you topped, uh, you know, your school, you know, uh, when it came to maths. Yes, mm. that I did. Uh, and was it like that all the way up until, you know, Form 5? And yes. uh, how were your final exams, you know? Yes, the final exams, as I said, I ran into trouble with the parabola. Yeah. And that wasted my time in paper one. So I don't think, I, I think I failed paper one. Yeah. But I must have done, passed everything in paper two because yes. I still got a, a very good symbol yes. for maths. But it wasn't the distinction I was... You, that aiming. you were looking for? I was looking for it. Yeah. So overall then, your, your pass mark? My pass mark overall was in upper second class. Yes, which yes. qualified you to go to varsity. Yes. And by that time, had you made up your mind, you know, what you were going to do, you know, um, what career you wanted to follow? Uh, I'm obviously interested to know whether medicine was already in your mind at that time. <laughs> no, um, I really wanted to be a scientist. Yeah. Um, but medicine really came from, it was a second choice. Yeah. Uh, but... You see, my father was the, the, the postman. He received the post of the village. Yes. So when my results came, uh, he saw this was telegram yes. re results. And he, he came, I was sitting with my immediate sister, the one yes, who's still Mamet. alive. No. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, Priska. Oh, Coco Isn't Priska. It? Yeah, yes. it was, I was sitting with Priska. Like, he came in and said, congratulations, you have done well. You have passed. So we all hugged each other and he left. I think five minutes later came back. He says, what do you want? Priska says, doctor. Oh. I hadn't thought of it until that time. Yeah. Priska said, doc doctor. And meaning that, medical that doctor, father, not PhD doctor. Yeah, yeah, meaning medical. Yeah. My father says, that's so? I said, yes. And I hadn't up to then really made up my mind I was wanted to be a doctor. Yeah. yeah. So that Priska really decided for me. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, as the younger brother, you just complied. Yeah. Well, anyway, you, you, ha you, ha you had the abilities. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's that. And that's when it started. But then um, you didn't go straight to do medicine. You decided yes. that you're going to um, go via a BSc route. That's right. You know, uh, just tell us a little bit about the thinking there. Yeah, well, when we, uh, if, a week or so later, my elder brother came and we started applying. We used to apply to go to university late then. You still go to your place. The mm. results were back then we applied to university. And uh, um, my father says, you're going to do me pre-medical courses. I said, not only that, I'm mm -hmm. going to do BSc first. He said, and he was what for? I said, I want to be a scientist before I become a doctor. Yes, because so, those days, um, you could get to medicine via doing a pre-med, which is more like a first year yeah, you of did. BSc. That's and right. if you do well, you could get to medicine. That's right. It was then, it was, um, the pre-med was botany, mm -hmm. ge 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 zoology, chemistry, and physics. physics. Yes. You see, so if you wanted to do a degree, you had to have this for yes. anyway, yes. somewhere in the degree. Yeah. Now, that's what gave me trouble with continuing with mathematics, is yes. that the first year I had to do those pre-med courses. Yeah. Then I had to choose two to major in, and it's chemistry was obviously choice mm. and zoology. Yes. And I couldn't fit mathematics as a, as a first course yeah. what, because practicals and at last. So I had to do something. I had to do psychology. Yeah. So I did psychology as, as one of the subjects. Mm. And, and, I, and your beloved subject, you know, which forever. is maths, you gone never forever. managed to take it yeah. to tertiary. Never, to, never at all. I, that's why I, I felt my degree was, was, was a bit... Uh, uh, lacked, wasn't quite full. Yes. It lacked the, the But the, the, the thing about you wanting to be a scientist before you went to the wasn't the, the But the, the, the yes, thing about how you, it was, I loved it so the, much. But you know, this, it, what was it? The, was, what was the thinking? It is, it is a mathematics. You know, just yeah. being in the midst of that it group of people. But the, the idea, 
in well, this country? Well, I, I don't know the actual, so I doubt whether the moon, they took you know, more than 10 students. The of, like, but they took more than 10 students. But this was an idea. Office, I said, you know, well, I, I don't know the actual, I, I doubt I'm whether a, they took more than 10 students a year. Yeah. A day to collect the, the, the But the, you just give us an idea.